Hi, Steve Gale here. In this video, what we're going to do is we look at subnetting IP networks. So we'll look at subnetting an IPv4 network, and uh, we'll also look at um, using a slash 24 prefix, um, how we subnet a slash 16 prefix and a slash 8 prefix. So in other words, class C, class B, and class A networks. So the first thing we need to consider is why we need to subnet. So with broadcast domains, we know that um, that um, Ethernet lands use um, broadcasts to um, to identify uh, using ARP IP uh, IP and MAC addresses of computers to communicate with the, on the network, and also services, for example DHCP, also send broadcasts on the local network to locate a, DH, a suitable DHCP server. Now, the thing is that um, these broadcasts are propagated at all interfaces of a switch on the network. And um, essentially what they do is when there's a broadcast taking place, no other traffic can traverse the network. So what that means is that if you've got a large number of hosts on a network, then the proportion of broadcast traffic versus actual data transfer traffic is going to be skewed towards broadcast. So what we need to do is we need to minimise the number of hosts on a network to reduce that proportion of broadcast traffic to overall data traffic. So what this does effectively, the problems with live broadcast domains is what it does is it slows, slows the network operations down because it takes longer for a, for a host to access the network while there's broadcast traffic. So if you consider what this LAN here with um, 400 users, in one, all sitting in one broadcast domain, there's going to be a lot of a lot of broadcast traffic. So what we can do as a solution to that is if we subnet the network here, so we say put half the users in one subnet and the other half of users in the other subnet, then the proportion of broadcast traffic to data traffic is going to be halved because we'll reduce the number of hosts that will be broadcasting within that subnet. If we look at reasons for subnetting, obviously we need to reduce the um, proportion of broadcast traffic to actual data traffic, but um, we can also achieve some other goals with subnetting as well. One example here, we've got subnetting by location, where we have different subnets, say for every floor of a building, so we can subnet by floor. Another example here is where we subnet by organisational unit, so we've got a, in this example here, we've got a human resources subnet, we've got an accounting subnet, a student subnet, and an administration subnet. The advantage of doing that is we can apply different security policies to each separate subnet. And in an organisation, there might be different, say, security policies for the HR team versus students in an educational institution, for example. Another example of why we might want a subnet is we might, say, want to segregate our hosts from servers and then have other devices like printers on a separate subnet as well. So we can subnet by device type. The easiest way to subnet is via octet boundaries. So when we look at octets, we, if we look at an IP address, we've got one, two, three, four octets. So if we subnet based on octet boundaries, then we end up with a prefix select length of either slash eight for a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0 or a sub prefix length of slash 16, which is 255.255.0.0 as a subnet mask or slash 24 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. So depending on the, um, the, the subnet mask, then that, that determines the number of network bits and the number of host bits in the IP address. So with a slash eight prefix, we've got um, 256 possible networks and we've got 16 million hosts. If we look at the slash 16 prefix, then we've got 65,000 networks and 65,000 possible hosts per network. In a slash 24, we've got um, a very large number, it's um, 
2 to the 24 number of possible networks and possibility of having 254 hosts per network. So when we subnet, essentially what we're doing is we're borrowing host bits and using those as network bits. So that's how we create subnets. We borrow host bits, reduce the number of hosts, and we use those bits for um, adding to the network address to give us more network address possibilities. In this example, what we're doing is we're subnetting a class A address, a 10 network, um, and we're going to use the second octet as our subnet. So normally the 10 network would be a slash eight, but when we're subnetting this, we can make it a slash 16 network. And uh, what that does is it means that this whole octet can be used for subnet addresses. So when the subnet address and the network address are combined, that gives us two octets for network addresses and two octets for host addresses. So we'd have, with the 10 network, we've got 256 possible subnets. So we've got here, we've got 256 possible subnets here. And essentially we'll have 65,534 hosts because these last two octets can be used for the, um, for the hosts. So our first subnet will be 10.0 and, um, and our next subnet will be 10.1 and next subnet will be 10.2 and next subnet would be 10.3, and next subnet would be 10.4, and so forth up to 10.255, which would be our last subnet. So that would give us 256 possible subnets. If you look at our first subnet, if we look at, we need to consider the, um, the broadcast address, which would be 10.0.255.255. So that gives us a host range or allowable host addresses from 10.0.0.1 10.0.255.254. So we lose the first address, which is the network address, 10.0.0.0. We lose the last address, 10.0.255.255 as our broadcast address. So our host range, our possible number of addresses that we can provide to hosts is 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.255.254. If we consider the next subnet or the next network, 10.1.0.0, we've got allowable host range between 10.1.0.1 to 10.1.255.254. And this continues for all of the subnets within the range. We could also subnet on an octet boundary by using a class C subnet or a slash 24. So in this, in this subnet here, what we're going to do is we're going to borrow two octets to um, specify our subnets. So that'll give us the possibility of 65,536 possible subnets. So two to the eight times two to the eight. And, um, and our, our prefix will be slash 24 which will give us the possibility of 254 hosts. So sub, sub, uh, subnetting a 10 network will give us 65,000 subnets. Each subnet can contain up to 254 hosts. Slash 24 is very popular because 254 hosts is still a lot of hosts um, for broadcasts. So you really don't want to have a network with 16,000 hosts because you're going to have you're going to be overwhelmed with broadcast. So 254 or less is probably the most popular. And in most cases, you'll see subnetting down to slash 24 or lower. So in this example here, um, our first network would be 10.0.0.0 slash 24. And our broadcast address would be 10.0.0.255. And that would give us 254 possible hosts the first one being 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.0.254. Okay, so even though we've got 256 bits in the last octet, um, or 256 distinct possibilities in the last octet, 
We lose the zero address, which describes our network. We lose the 255, which describes our broadcast, which gives us 254 possible hosts from address one up to address 254. The next subnet will be 10.0.1, the next one 10.0.2, up to 10.0.255. So far we've been looking at classful subnetting, which is subnetting on octet boundaries, but we can also do classless subnetting. With classless subnetting, what we do is we borrow bits, individual bits, out of the host portion, rather than borrowing a whole octet, we borrow individual bits. So for example, if we consider a slash 24 network, and we were going to subnet a slash 24 network, if we used a prefix length of slash 25, in other words, we borrow one extra host bit, so we've got 8, 16, 24, and we borrow one more bit, then that will give us a slash 25 prefix, which would be a subnet mask of 255.255.255. .255 and then we've borrowed the 128 bit. So dot 128 is our subnet mask. If we borrow that extra bit for our subnet, then that bit can be either a one or a zero. So it gives us the possibility of having two subnets. One subnet when that bit is zero, the other subnet when that bit is one. So that will give us two subnets in our slash 24 network. And, but what we've done is we've halved the number of possible hosts. So now we can only have 126 hosts. 128, the zero, the zero one is used for the subnetwork and the all ones is used for the broadcast. So that gives us a possible number of hosts of 126. If we were to then say that wasn't enough and we wanted four subnets, we could borrow two bits, which would give us a slash 26 prefix. And that would be a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 128 plus 64, which is 192. Using those two bits gives us four possibilities for subnets, 00, 01, 10, and 11. So that means we have four subnets and We'll have less hosts now, so we've got 64 minus 2, or 62 hosts, because we lose the 0 for the subnet, and we you lose all Fs for the broadcast. So 64 minus 2 gives us 62 numbers of hosts. Slash 27, borrowing 3 bits, that'll give us 8. 2 to the 3 will give us 8 subnets, and 30 hosts. Slash 28 will give us 16 subnets, but only 14 hosts. Slash 29 will give us 32 subnets, but only six hosts. And slash 30, which gives us 64 subnets, but only two hosts. So you can't really go past slash 30 because you need at least two hosts so they can communicate with each other. Slash 30 networks are quite commonly used for router-to-router -router point to point connections where you only need two addresses. So if you were really trying to conserve your addresses, you'd submit that at slash 30 and you'd allocate one address to one router, another address to the other router, and maybe a serial or an ether in interface in between them, and that is your network. So, but you don't go beyond slash 30. In this example here, what we're doing is we're subnetting a 192.168.1.0 network, and it's slash 24. But what we want to do is we want to subnet it into two subnets. So that means that we need to take one host bit, um, which can either be zero or one, to generate two possible subnets. One subnet when that host bit is zero, one, 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 and one subnet when that bit is one. So we get, we take one bit, it gives us two subnets. Our total number of hosts is two to the power of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because we've got seven bits left for our host. So two to the seven is 128, but we have to take off two for the network address and for the broadcast address. So our total number of hosts is two to the seven or 128 minus two, which gives us 126 and our subnetworks or our subnets, we've got two. 
So if we're going to look at those subnets and find out what addresses they would be, our subnet, work can, our subnet bit can either be 0 or it can be 1. So if it's 0, it'll be 192.168.1.0. So 192.168.1.0 slash 25 is our first subnet work. If we then set all of the remaining bits to 1, that will give us our broadcast address, which will be 192.168.1.127 slash 25. So that's our broadcast address for that subnetwork. So that gives us usable hosts between 192.168.1.1 and 192.168.1.126. If we consider our second subnet, when this subnet bit is equal to 1, our network address will be 192.168.1.128. So 192.168.1.128 slash 25. And then our broadcast will be when all of the host bits are 1, or 192.168.1.255 slash 25. So the interesting thing to note here is that the 192.168.1.255 is our broadcast address for our second subnet. But the broadcast address for our first subnet is when the subnet bit is 0, but all the host bits are 1. In other words, 1.127. And so there's a concept called the magic number, which helps us when we're working out and calculating subnets. And the magic number is the place value of the last bit in the subnet mask. So for example, if we were to do a slash 25 network, then we've got this, here's our network bits, and our last bit is our subnet bit, and that's slash 25. So our magic number would be the place value of that bit, which is 128. If we're doing a slash 26 network, then we would be 8, 16, 24, 26, and the place value of that bit is in the 64 columns. That's 128, 64, 32. And slash 27, likewise, is the 32. So you've got two, you've got um, 128, 64, 32, and the magic number is 32. Now, how we use this magic number, if we think of slash 25, and we're using one bit, and our magic number is 128. If we go back to the previous example, we've got our number of hosts is the magic number minus 2, 126. So the magic number here, 128 minus 2, gives us the number of hosts. So our magic number minus 2. Similar, and the other thing to consider is that our second subnet is the value of the magic number. So our first subnet is 0, and our next subnet is the next subnet address is the value of the magic number. And this works for all, for all subnets. If we look at this example for magic number, here we can see our subnet, we're subnetting here to um, um, 8, 16, 24, 25, 26, 27. It's a slash 27 network. And our magic number is 128, 64, 32. So if our magic number is 32, what that tells us is 32 minus 2 will get 30 hosts per network. And if you look at our, our subnets, we've got eight of them. The first one is 0, the next one is 32. Add another 32 and we get 64. So our next network address will be 64. Add 32 again and next network is 96. Add 32 again and next network is 128. Add 32 again, our next network is 160. Add 32 again, our next network is 192. Add 32 again, our next network is 224. And just to check that you've got it correct, if you add 32 again, you'll get 256, which obviously you're at into here, so that makes no sense. But what it does is it shows that the magic number allows us to calculate all of the network addresses for all of the subnets that we're creating. So the magic number, which it corresponds to the, 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 the least significant bit of the, um, the subnet mask, 
or the, the subnet, and its, its bit position tells us a lot of information about subnetting. In this example here, what we're doing is we've got a 172.16 network, which is a, um, a class B network, which would be slash 16. But what we're going to do is we're going to subnet it to slash 23. So you can see here we're borrowing 8, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So we're borrowing seven bits from the host from the host address. So that will give us a subnet mask of 255.255.254.0. But our magic number is two, because if you look at the bit position here, it's in the two column. So that's the that's the one, that's the one column, the two column, the four column, the eight column, and so on. So it's two. So our magic number is two. So our first network will be 172.16.00. Our next network is going to be 172.16.20. Our next network is going to be 172.16.40. And our next net, the network after that will be 172.16.60. So we keep adding the magic number two to the network to find each of our networks. And we're going to have a whole bunch of them. We're going to have, um, you know, a lot, a lot of subnets in this one, but that um, we can still use the magic number to work out what the networks are going to be. Another way of looking at um, classless subnetting is with another example. Here we've got a 192.168.1.0 network, which would normally be a class C slash 24. But what we're going to do is we're going to borrow one bit and use slash 25. So you can see here we've got 192.168.1 and we borrow one bit for the network portion, which and then these are our remaining host bits here. And our subnet mask originally would have been 255.255.255.0, but we need to borrow that bit, 255.255.255, that will be added to the subnet mask. So that'll be 255.255.125.128. So you can see here that the borrowed bit gives us two, net, two subnets, that borrowed bit can either be a zero or a one. And um, that will give us our two subnets. If you look at this in, in dotted decibel notation, then we borrow one bit here. So we've got 192.168.1.0. That's our, that's our bit. That's our original mask. We'll borrow that bit. We've got 192.168.1.0 is one network. 192.168.1.128 is our other network, and our subnet mask is 255.255.255.128. Now that subnet mask will be the same for both subnets. So all of the subnets, when you subnet, all of the subnet, subnets will have the same subnet mask with classless subnetting. So you might ask the question, how do we practically apply this? Well, if you consider this network diagram, you've got a router here, and um, what you've got is you've got two interfaces, so you're creating two subnets. We've got a 192.168.1 network, and we can subnet it as slash 25. So what we do is we make one network the 192.168.1.0 network, and we'll make the other network the 192.168.1.128 network. And, um, and then, so... Our first available host, we normally allocate to the router interface. So you can see on this network here, it'll be the router interface will be 192.168.1.1. But on our other interface here, our 192.168.1.128 network, the first available host address is .129. So we allocate a .129 to our router interface, and that means that we can use .130 for our, for our PC and from there on, 31, 132, and 133. Similarly over here, .1.2, because .1.1 is being used for our router interface, then we can use .1.2 for our PC on this network. So when you're configuring the router, you'd say interface, interface gigabit 00. Okay, its IP address is 192.168.1.1, and the subnet mask 255.255.255.128. Our other Ethernet interface, IP address 1.129, 255.255.255.128. Notice the two subnet masks are the same. And when we configure our host, 
down here, PC2, if we look at PC2, 192.168.1.130, subnet mask 2555, 255.128, and the default gateway, .1.129, which is the, um, the router interface that the, um, the PC is connected to within this subnet. So if we look at this example um, again, you consider the same networking example. We've got the 192.168.1.0 network slash 24. We want to make two subnets, so we borrow one bit. The magic number for that is 128 because it's in the 128 position. So here we've got the 128 is set to 1. Everything else is set to 0, so our magic number is there. Our first network will be dot one dot zero because that's when this bit is set is zero is our first network and our second network dot one dot one twenty eight when this bit is set to one and magic number is one twenty eight so our next subnet starts at one twenty eight and how many available hosts will we have one twenty eight minus two so we'll get one twenty six hosts available hosts in this network and one twenty six available hosts in this network. So we can look at this as a subnetting formula and if we start off with a slash 24 network 192.168.1.0 as you can see here every host bit that we borrow um, increases the number of subnets. So if we borrow one bit we get two to the power of one or two subnets. If we borrow two bits we get two to the power of two or four subnets. If we borrow three bits, we get two to the power of three or eight subnets and so on. So the, the, calcul the formula for calculating the number of subnets is two to the power of n, where n is equal to the number of bits that we borrow out of the host portion for our subnetting. So we can use this formula, two to the power of n, to calculate the number of subnets. To calculate the number of hosts, then we can use 2 to the power of n minus 2. So 2 to the power of n minus 2 will give us the number of hosts. Where n is the number of bits remaining in the host portion. So if we've got 7 bits remaining in the host field here, 2 to the power of 7 minus 2, 2 to the power of 7 is 128, minus 2 gives us 126. So in the previous example, the n value was the, the number of subnet bits. For calculating the hosts, the n value is the number of remaining bits for hosts in the host field, 2 to the n minus 2, or if you like, the magic number, minus 2. Yep. Will give us the, um, the number of hosts. Another common subnetting scenario is where we might need to create four subnets and from a, say, from a class C, and that would mean that we would use uh, 24 plus 2, which is slash 26 subnetting. If you look at this network diagram here, we've got two subnets, but we need another network to connect these two routers. So we actually need three networks. We need one network here, we need one network here, and we need one network here. So we need three, but they only come in multiples of two. So even though we only need three, we're going to have to create four subnets, but we'll only use three of them. So to get four subnets, we need to borrow two bits. So we borrow two bits, which leaves us six bits, six bits remaining in the host field. And magic number will be 128.64. So two to the power of six, is 64 IP addresses per subnet. 2 to the power of 6 minus 2 is 62 hosts addresses per subnet. So we'll get 62 hosts per subnet. So we could have 62 hosts on this network, 62 hosts on this network. This one we could have 62 hosts, but we only need two. We only need two in a, two IP addresses, one for this router interface and one for this router interface. But even still, we, will, we, need a, we need a separate network or a separate subnet for this network connection between the two routers. So here we borrow our two bits. 
If you look at um, our first network, will be 192.168.1.0. Our next network magic number is 128.64. So our next network will be 1.64. The next next network is 1.128. The next network is 1.192. And our subnet mask will be 255.255.255.128 plus 64, which is 192. So you can see we've added this first network is 1.0, this network, next network is 1.64, and this net, ne next network here, we can allocate 1.128. That'll make this router interface dot one. This router interface dot 65, which is our first usable host address on the 64 network, and this router interface 129, which is the first usable host address on the 128 network, and then this one could be 130. So this is, this is a very common subnetting scenario that you will find where you need, say, four subnets. If we wanted to look at this in long form, what we could do is we could lay it out like this where we look at our different networks, 192.168.1.0, and then we've got our network address. Our first host address is .1, 192.168.1.1. Our last is our network address is 11111, but the last bit is 0, or 62. And our broadcast, we've still got 00, zero for our subnet address, but the, the host portion is all 1s, which would give us 63. Then we look at our next net. So our next net is 1.64, or 01, for our um, subnet bits, and 00, zero is, our, is our network address. Then we've got our first usable host, 01, and then one on the first bit, 65. Then we've got our last host, or if you look at look at here, we've got our broadcast where it's all ones, 127, and one less than that is our last usable host. So this is our first usable host address. This is our last usable host address. Network two, the, um, the subnet bits are 10 or 128. 129 is our first usable host address. 190 is our last usable host address. 191 would be our broadcast address, which is one less than 192, which it would be our net three if we if we required a net three. But going back to this diagram, we only have three nets: net one, net two, and net three. Oh, sorry, net zero, net one, and net two. We don't need a net three. Net zero, net one, and net two. So if we look at how we would configure this router, this is router one, we'd go interface gigabit ethernet 00, and we'd set the IP address 192.168.1.1, subnet mask 255.255.255.192. You need to make sure you get the subnet mask correct, otherwise the routing, you'll have all sorts of issues. So when you're subnetting, you need to make sure that you're using a subnet mask, which is appropriate to the subnetting that you're doing. Gigabit 01 would be IP address 192.168.1.65, subnet mask of 255.192, and then our interface serial 000, IP address 192.168.1.129, subnet mask 255.255.192. If we look at this example in relation to magic number, Again, 192.168.1.0 slash 24. We want uh, four subnets. We need three, but we're going to have to make four. So two to the power of two gives four, so we need to take two bits. Our magic number will be 128.64. So 64 is our magic number. Here we go, 64. So 1.0 is our first subnet. 1.64 is our next subnet. 1.128 is our next subnet. 1. 192 would be our last subnet. If we add 64 to 192, we'll get 256, so we've run out of subnets. So these are our four subnet addresses. The broadcast for this one is going to be one less than that, or 63. The broadcast for this network is going to be one less than that, or 127. The broadcast address for this network will be one less than that, or 191. The broadcast for this network will be one less than 256, or if you like, 255. So from the magic number, you can basically work out 
all of the subnet addresses that you need. You can work out the broadcast address and you can also work out the usable hosts. So the magic number is really helpful in working all of this stuff out. Another example here, we need to create eight subnets, or if you like from our slash 24 network, we need to go to slash 27. So we need three bits, two to the three is eight. So we're gonna borrow three bits, and that'll give us two to the power of three, or give us eight subnets. So if we look at our magic number, 128, 64, 32. So our magic number is 32, which is the, the bit position of the, um, the least significant bit in our subnetting. So our first network will be 192.168.1.0 slash 27. Add 32 to that, and our next network is 32, 1.32. Add another 32, and our next network is .64. Add another 32, and our next network will be .96. Add another 32 and we get 128. Add another 32 and we get 160. Add another 32 and we get 192. Add another 32 and we get 224. And finally, to check it, 224 plus 32 will give us 256. So these are the network addresses of our eight networks. From this, we can work out the broadcast address of the first one is going to be one less than that or .31. The broadcast address of this network is going to be one less than that, or 63, and so forth. So you can work out the broadcast address, and then from there you can work out the, um, the first host address, first usable host address, and the last usable host address as well. Okay, looking at subnetting with a slash 16 and a slash 8 prefix, in other words, subnetting a class A or a class B, B network, First of all, with a class 16, you can see we, if, we, if we borrow one bit from here, that'll be a slash 17 or 255 to 255.128 subnet mask. That'll give us two subnets, but instead of 65,000 hosts, we'll get 32,000 hosts. Borrow two bits and we get four subnets, 16,000 hosts. Borrow three bits, we get eight subnets, 8,190 hosts, and it keeps on continuing. As we increase the number of subnet bits, we reduce the num we increase the number of subnets and we reduce the number of available hosts. Let's say the problem that we had was we had a slash 16 network and we needed a hundred subnets. So what do we do if we need we know the number of subnets that we need? How do we find out how many bits to borrow? Well, every time you borrow a bit, if you borrow one bit, you get two to the power of one subnets. You borrow two bits, you get two to the power of two subnets. Three bits, two to the power of three. So you keep going down here, we need 100. So we've got 16, we get 32, we get 64. We get to here and we get two to the power of seven is 128. So if we borrow seven bits, that will give us more than 100 subnets, but we'll at least get our 100 subnets. So in this case, we'll need to borrow seven bits to get at least 100 subnets. So that means we'll have a, um, if we borrow seven bits, it'll be 16 plus seven, so it'll be 23, slash 23. That'll give us 128 subnets, but we'll get our 100. So the bit position of that is here, which is one, two, so that's in the two position. So you can see that our magic number is two, so our first num network will be 172.16.0. Our next network will be 172.16.2, 172.16.4, all the way up to 172.16.254 as our last network. So they will be all of, our, all of our network addresses. So we can use the magic number to work out what the network addresses are going to be when we using a um, slash 16 prefix, and we know how many subnets we need. So in this example, how do we calculate the number of hosts? Well, we've borrowed seven bits, but that leaves eight plus one, nine bits remaining in the host field. So two to the power of nine gives us 512 IPs per subnet, 
If we take two off that, that will give us 510 hosts per subnet. So if you look at the remaining number of bits, then from the remaining number of bits, you can work out how many hosts you're going to get with each subnet. So if we look at the um, subnet here, the first network we get is 172.16.0.0, and it will go, because we know that our, our magic number was two, so our next network is 172.16.2.0. So that means our broadcast address for our first network will be 172.16.1.255. That gives us our first host of 172.16.0.1 and our last host of 172.16.1.254. And so from that, we can work out our network address, our first host address, our last host address, and our broadcast address, again, by using the, the magic number. So just to round up on the magic number, we need 100 subnets, 172.16.0.0. We know that we need to get 100 subnets. We need 2 to the power of 7 will give us 128. So we borrow 7 bits. Our magic number is going to be then this one, this, this bit position here, which is 2. So our magic number is two. So our first network, 172.16.0. Our next network, 172.16.2. The following network, 172.16.4, 172.16.6, and so on and so on, up to 254. So let's look at an example now where we, we've got a slash eight network, so a class A network, so we're using a 10 network. And we want to create a thousand subnets. So how many host bits do we need to borrow for our subnet bits? We've got 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. So you can see we need to borrow 10 bits to get 1,024 subnets. If we've got 1,024, we'll satisfy our need for 1,000. Five, nine bits isn't enough because we only get 512, but we want 1,000. So we need to borrow 10 bits to get 1,024 subnets. In this example, if we borrow 10 bits, out, we, borrow, um, we borrow 8 bits plus 2 bits, then 2 bits, well, that will mean that we're into the... Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. We borrow eight bits, so that's 12864. So our magic number is going to be 64. So you can see our first network will be 10.0.0.0 slash 18. Eight plus 10 is 18. Our next network is going to be 64. Our next network is 128. 128 plus 64 is 192. Our next network will be 10.1.0.0. And our next network after that will be 10.01.0.64. So we'll get 164, 1.128, 1.192, 1.1024, 1 and then 2.0, 1.1.0.0.0. 1 2.128, and so on up to 255.192. If we look at how many bits remain in the host field, we've got 8 plus 6, which is 14 bits. So 2 to the power of 14 gives us 16,384. We subtract two off that. That means we've got 16,382 hosts, IPs, for every subnet. If we consider our first network of 10.0.0.0 slash 18, then our first usable host is going to be 10.0.0.1 slash 18. Our broadcast address, because our next network was 10.0.0.64 based on our magic number, so then 10.0.0.63.255 would be the broadcast address. And then the last host address one behind that, or 10.0.63.254 is our last host address. So the thing to remember here is always look for the magic number. It's the last one in the binary from the, from the subnet. So in this example here, we've got a 10 network. We're taking, we want eight subnets. So we've got um, 
128, 64, 32. So 32 is our magic number. We've got eight plus three, so it's slash 11. And you can see 32, 64, 96, uh, 128, 160, 192, 224. These are all of our, these will be all of our networks. So the magic number going up by 32 in this case, because the, the last, the least significant bit is our, is our um, in the 32 bit position. So when we subnet, subnet what, what, generally there's requirements that determine how we subnet. Sometimes it's based on the host requirements. So how many hosts do we need? So we subnet based on the number of hosts. So we're given a problem, we say, okay, we want um, 28 hosts. So then you'd have to you'd say, okay, well, I'll use 30 and I'll borrow three bits and make it from a slash 24 network into a slash 27 network. So you might be given a requirement how many hosts you need per subnet. Alternatively, you might be asked to subnet based on network requirements. So in this example here, we've got a corporate network. We've got HR, executive, R&D, tech support. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six subnets. So we might say, okay, we've, we need six subnets. So we're going to subnet based on the network requirements or the, sub, the number of subnets rather than the number of hosts. So it depends on the situation as to whether you're subnetting based on the number of hosts or whether you're subnetting based on the number of networks that you require. So in an example here, network requirement example, we've got um, how many? We've got one, two, three, four, five networks. So we're going to need to at least three, we're going to need at least three bits or eight subnets to cover that. But then you look at the number of hosts, we've got 30 hosts in here, 23 hosts in here, 40 hosts in there, 35 hosts in there, 10 hosts in there. So to cover off these number of hosts, we're going to um, 40 hosts. So we're going to need at least 62 hosts. So we'll need enough, enough bits to cover 62 hosts per per network so you need to look at your network and then dimension out well how many host bits how, how many bits do i need for hosts to cover the greatest number of hosts in each network and how many networks do i need so how many subnet bits do i need to make sure that i've got enough networks to cover off the um the requirements of the network so to satisfy this example 40 hosts is the greatest number of hosts so we need we need at least 60, 62. Um, so what they've done is they've used um, 64. So the first network is zero. The next network is 64. That'll give us 62 usable hosts. And that'll cover off the 40 that we've got for the greatest number. So 64, 128, 192. And then it's going up by 64s. So that's our magic number here is the, is the um, 64. But what they've done is they've decided to use four bits for the host portion, which will give us um, two to the four or 16 network possibilities. We only need, we have, they only needed to take three bits because we've only got one, two, three, four, five. But for whatever reason, they've decided to take four bits. And um, if we look at the network here, you can see we've got zero is the first network, 64 is the next network, um, 128 is the next network. 192 is the next network, 0, 192, and then 1.0 is the next network. Okay, well, that pretty much rounds up um, subnetting. I hope that's um, been helpful, and thanks very much for your time.